Hi everybody, Patrick here from Engineering Shock Electronics, engineeringshock.com, and this is the Arduino Epic Learning Center Project 16, the ultrasonic rangefinder. And you might notice that I've removed a lot of the plugins. Uh, when you don't have a project going on, you don't need to have everything plugged in because uh, they consume power and there's n it's not necessary. So the HCSR04 ultrasonic rangefinder, uh, one transducer acts to send out an ultrasonic signal, and the other waits to receive it. And the, the time it takes between when the signal is transmitted and the signal is received determines the distance away from an object. So that plugs in right here into this 4-pin header and we need to connect, make two connections to the board uh, minus the LCD. Now we've connected the LCD countless times at this point. Uh, the idea is if you are following these videos that you are following the code examples and um, in the videos in order because we're learning a little bit by little bit. So for the LCD, we've got the LCD P dip switch turned to the left on. We've turned got all of our quick connect LCD pins turned to the left, which connect GPIO pins four through nine on chip A to the LCD. We want to connect our U, tr U trig pin for ultrasonic trigger pin to GPIO two and our U echo ultrasonic echo pin to GPIO3. And if we power up the LCD should start reading. So right now this is about 13 centimeters away. So if I start moving the unit back it's currently sampling at about 100 times a second. Now if I move it forward it can read up to distances of 200 centimeters. I'm moving it forward still. Six centimeters. And once it gets really close, it becomes unstable. From my experience. Three centimeters. Three. So now it's having a little bit of trouble differentiating, but we're down to two centimeters, so I'll keep pushing it forward. Now it's basically touching and it's not making a whole lot of sense. But if we bring it back, it'll be very consistent in its reading. Eight centimeters. And it's updating 100 times a second. Sorry, 10 times a second. There's a 100 millisecond delay in between each reading. And we clear the LCD. We update the, the LCD with the new information and so on and so on. It's a very simple video. Um, if you're playing with the code, the code is extremely simple. It's a, it's a, I'm sure a nice break for some of you who may or may not have had some trouble with Project 15. Project 15 was a more difficult one, uh, I, but it was my favorite so far. So I hope you'll check out that video, and I hope you'll check out the comment code uh, through the Kickstarter link below on the project page. Uh, but in, in any case, I just wanted to show you how this block work works. Uh, there's a few uh, blocks that I, I just want to uh, quickly showcase before we really get on with some of the bigger projects. Next, I think what I'll do is I'll I'll experiment with the microphone. I think we'll create a clap on, clap off circuit. I'm not positive yet. I also want to work with the ultrasonic, or sorry, the infrared transmitter and a receiver. Just so many things we have left unexplored on this board. Uh, so many more videos to come. Uh, I'm going to take a few days of a break so I can get the orders for the Epic ready. I uh, I'm so this will be the last project for a few days. But once I get the orders orders in, I'll uh, I'll be able to uh, concentrate on more projects and project videos. But if, again, if you haven't already, check out the uh, Kickstarter link below. Kick, check out the project page. All of the videos are linked there. Uh, and uh, all of the commented code will be available to anybody until this campaign ends, and at which point, uh, once the campaign ends, there will be a password protect on the website link. So thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day. I hope that uh, you enjoyed this uh, program if you're, if you're playing it with your own Epic down the road. And I strongly encourage you to manipulate the code because that's how you learn. You play with it, you tinker with it, and if worst case scenario you make the code unusable, you just re-download it again. It's that simple. Thanks again, everyone.